Hey everybody, Russ Matter here. Welcome to part 13 of my Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel Let's Play. The last episode, Sakura and Shiro finally admitted their feelings to each other. Uh, depending on which version you watched, whether it was the Patreon version or the YouTube version, uh, it went very differently, but safe to say that Shiro offered a part of his body to be able to help Sakura uh, recover some of her magical energy or get some magical energy to keep her from going crazy. Uh, and basically said, like, hey, I'll be here for you if you need help from me. And with that, Shiro has left to go to Ilya's place to uh, request help from Ilya and to warn her about uh, Zoken. And at the very end, Sakura was left alone with Ryder, and Sakura told Ryder, go with Shiro. So I have a feeling either Ryder is going to rescue Shiro from an attack, or Sakura's gonna get kidnapped by Zoken because she's by herself. We'll see, or maybe something completely different happens. Uh, only one way to find out. Let's go ahead and see what happens next. A few minutes walk from the National Highway. Even though I've never seen it in person, the forest entrance looks familiar. It's white like morning mist even during the day. Dim sunlight and fog steal the sense of time from this place. Ooh. I can't believe how reckless I'm being. I didn't get lost back then because I was watching it through Ilya, but this isn't something I can manage by memory alone. Yeah. I put spirit in myself as I put the bag over my shoulder. It's past noon. It takes about four hours to reach Ilya's castle from here, according to what I saw. All I can rely on now are my physical strength, memory, and recollection skills. I walk through the forest. The smell of sap is a bit suffocating. The unpaved path is tiring to walk on. It's been two hours, and I think I'm following the route Ilya showed me. But it's worrying that there's no sign to confirm I'm on track. I can keep walking all day because of my training, but mental fatigue is chipping away at my energy. If memory serves, I still have two hours to go. I can easily imagine what'll happen if I don't end up at the castle in that time. My physical limit is far, but I'll make trivial mistakes with a disturbed mind. Rehydration and monitoring your condition are your highest priorities during mountain climbing. You have to worry about which foot you step with and the depth of the bare rock you're scaling. Even though the forest isn't as dangerous as a mountain, this place has a different kind of danger. Losing your sense of direction, not knowing where you are. There's the danger of getting lost, and who knows what beasts you might encounter. Beasts living in this vast forest are likely to have their territories. When people stray into those territories, they're usually attacked. Walking aimlessly is like asking to be attacked. And even a straight animal trail needs to be avoided from time to time. Fortunately, snakes don't seem to exist in this forest. All I see are traces of wild dogs, and that's rare too. I bet there aren't many living things here because of the magic of Einsburn on this forest. But there are a few wild dogs, and there may be far worse things. I go around to the thicket that an animal may be lurking in and make my way according to my memory. Discretion is the better part of valor. It's a rule of thumb to simply avoid dangerous places rather than waiting until the danger confronts you and then running away. The air around me feels different. An ominous chill runs down my back with every step. Don't go any further. Get out of this forest now. Nobody will return alive from this forest today. I feel like the swaying trees are warning me. It's interesting that he didn't get- there was that barrier that Ilya had up. I remember in the previous one when her- when him and Rin went. Uh, maybe it's because Ilya doesn't really see him as a threat, she sees him as an ally, so she, like, probably knows he's coming, but doesn't have the barrier up. I thought it was sap, but that's not quite right. The sweet smell is nothing like the forest. This is... Oh. Probably. Oh shit, okay, I didn't expect this. I keep forgetting that there's, like, that black thing there, and then there's also Assassin, which we haven't seen in a long time. I take out a wooden sword from my bag. I stop, concentrate, and strengthen it within a few minutes. I'm guessing that this thing might come after him, but like Ryder is going to protect him. A 
hear footsteps from the other side of the thicket. But maybe it is Ryder. He says he smells something sweet, so maybe it's Ryder coming to, like, accompany him. I hear sounds among the swaying branches. It's coming. It comes out. It heads straight for me. I raise my wooden sword. Tensing my arms, I grip the sword and stand ready. So, oh. Rin! Okay, I didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be Ryder. We both freeze. Well, how should I handle this situation? Tosaka lowers her guard first. I follow her example. I mean, it should be a good thing. The fact that he sees Rin means he's going in the right direction. She protests. The surprising part here, she's not denying that she's planning something. I get right to the point. なら私たちの戦いに首を突っ込む資格も義理もないはずよ。ない。けど、トウサカがイリアと戦うっていうのなら止める。なんでよ。もしかしてイリアとサクラを組ませるってはら？それもあるけど、トウサカ、イリアと
マトウゾウケンが何やら企んでるから甘く見てると痛い目に遭うってキャスターのこともあるしまさかまでああなっちゃこっちが不利でしょけどそう忠告したところで戦いになるって覚悟してたけどね私とあの子じゃ話し合いなんてできない一応忠告してそれで戦いになるのなら仕方ないって思ってたいずれ倒さないといけない相手だし遅いか早いかの違いでしょでも見たところエミヤ君にはあてがありそうじゃないなら冒険をする必要もないしエミヤ君の努力次第でことは丸く収まるってことほら難しい顔しないあなたがエリアスフィールを説得できるなら私はおとなしく帰ってあげるでもし失敗したら協力してあの子を倒すか2人して逃げられるように手を貸すわどう悪い話じゃないんじゃない悪い話も何もお前どうあったって俺の後をついてくる気だろうまさかそんなの言いがかりよたまたま行き先が同じってこともあるんだし She's a devil, but she'll listen to me so long as I'm guiding her. Tosaka will go fight i l i if I leave her be, but she'll stay quiet if I take her with me. I sigh loudly, making sure Tosaka could hear it. I got t h a c o m e s t y l s h o m a d a s h o n i k o So, s e b a t o r i a z i l i a to a t a t a k a w a n a i n a Eh, Anata g a l i a s f i l to c o s h o s t e r i d a m o j a m a s h i n a i a Anako, t a k i n i m a s t a r a y a k a i d a k e d o m i k a t a n i de Kiruna t a n o m o s Oh, s h i n Tree shake. I hear explosions in the distance. No, this isn't an earthquake. Something like a typhoon is raging nearby. Tosaka, Kore. Tosaka. Do ya, I p o s o k a t a yone, a t a s t a t i Ooh, I wonder who he's fighting. There's not very many people left. Oh, the Abaratino. Basaka, Nanoka. Eh, a t a s t a t i Gakoni Rizo. Basaka got a taka like you, a Hitorishkai n i Okay. There's no time to think. I, well, thankfully, there is time to think because I can't remember what the choice I need to make is. All right, as expected, if I say I should stay here and just basically be a coward, I will get a bad end, so let's do that. It's dangerous to make a move before I know what I'm getting into. Eh. けどエミア君が残るのは正しい選択よ。私にはアーチャーがいるけど、エミア君は一人きりだから。I love how the game is even telling me, like, you're making the right choice. I'm not. 慎重な行動は間違いじゃないわ。わかった。アーチャーがいるからって油断するなよ。もちろん。危ないと思ったらすぐ戻るわ。トサカ starts running without turning around. The tremors continue. Osaka said, Berserker's fighting. Zoken and Assassin are the only other enemies. Berserker will not lose in pure fighting ability. Those two cannot beat him, no matter what tricks they pull. But wasn't that the case against Saber as well? Yeah, and Saber's the strongest. I have a bad feeling. I feel like I'm making the same mistake again. Darkness falls. It's not because the light has been blocked. My retinas are seared by black light as if I look directly into the sun. <laughs> And of course, I don't get to see what happened. My mind, filled with ominous、uh, presentiment, is filled with a different kind of uneasiness. A complete darkness in which I have no sense of direction. It feels as if I am swallowed into nothingness. <laughs> I fumble my way through the dark forest with my smashed vision. Bam, crash. I hit trees as I randomly walk on. I clumsily charge forward. I feel blood on my shoulder. My forehead has been gashed open where I hit it. But I still want something definite. Or definite.、Uh, definite? Running into nothing. 
Sorry, running into things and injuring myself is vastly preferable to having nothing. It's fine. It's fine. My eyes just broke down temporarily because of the sudden light. The forest is still there and I still feel the ground beneath my feet. It's just that my vision has gone black, but it should go away in time. Only a bit longer until my vision returns. I'm worried what that light was and if Tosaka's is alright, but I'm only going to pull her leg if I go to her with my eyes like this. I have to concentrate on getting my vision back and escaping this darkness. And then I'm just blind forever, wandering around through a forest until my imminent death. Just a bit longer. My vision should return soon. And if Ilya's been killed, then she's not going to come and rescue me, and same with Rin. I'm not worried about that. My vision will return. That's a definite fact. I'm just worried about the sounds around me. The storm has stopped before I knew it. I don't hear any crashing sounds either. Is there a reason I'm not hitting trees anymore? The darkness will disappear soon. I have to wait in this darkness until then. I'll concentrate on that for now. I can think later about why the sensation of the forest is gone. I can also think later about the fact my vision has already returned. I walk through the darkness feeling nothing. Even though I know I'm in a forest, when it's this dark, I start to get bad ideas. For example, like a ridiculous joke that I'm trapped in a world of shadows without an exit. I keep walking, bitterly laughing at my stupid thought. I feel nothing, but it's just a bit longer, 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 and my vision should return, and the original scene will be back in front of me. Dead end. Yeah, it's like he's seeing this vision of, of what's to come, maybe if, like, Zokin ends up winning, or this... That black shadow is just he's seeing, like, uh, in his dreams, that figure thing that just seems to be in the sky. Like, what's that about? ドートツではありますが、今夜は冬騎士一帯が停電のため闇芸こと相なりました。別にいいけど、真っ暗だね。真っ暗ね。寂しいね。寂しいわね。うん。イリアちゃん、私本当のこと言っていいかな。あんまし聞きたくないけど。何うん。なんかさ、私たち以外に誰かいる気がしないやめてよ、ネタエが。冗談でもそう<笑> I was dark. It sounded like she just got her insides splashed out. What the fuck? Iliya-chan?いやねえ、脅かしっこはなしよ。ねえ、ねえねえ、そこにうずくまってヒューヒュー言ってるのはイリアちゃんよね。そうだよ。お姉ちゃん。ガー<笑> 嘘つけ! Ooh, those are some very unpleasant sounds. Alright, let's try this again. Tosaka starts running. Archer takes form, gives me a single glance, and takes the lead. I clench the wooden sword in my hand and run after them at full speed. The girl flees the castle with a black giant. It's a baffling escape. She has abandoned her castle, the place designed to offer her the best defense to run to the forest. Danger is approaching. The girl was the first to sense the unavoidable fact. The enemy is approaching the castle. Because she felt the enemy is a great one, she maximized the castle's defense and woke the giant in anticipation of the enemy. The giant of steel, Berserker, personification of destruction, who has his sanity taken away and only obeys the girl. 
With her bodyguard and the castle's protection, she has nothing to fear. She tells herself this, suppressing her unease. But when the enemy drew near, her giant said, run. Even the one with no reason left understood he could not beat the approaching foe. Wow, that's that's wild that like if it, this is Zoken an assassin, you know, arguably the weakest servant is the one that is the one that even Berserker fears. I mean, he did kill Saber, so he's not he's no slouch. The girl started running at that instant. She knows that. She already knew that. The thing that reached the outer wall is not something they can match. It could be that black creature thing. It might not even be Zoken at all. Because, I mean, even Archer and Saber were afraid of it. And Zoken was afraid of it too. The ominous shadow expands with the sun behind it and becomes a great shadow to easily climb over the outer wall. That makes sense, right? It's like, it's not Zoken. If the bad end was everything being plunged into darkness, of course it's the shadow creature. They will lose. With her aside, Berserker cannot beat that thing. He will lose if he fights it, and Berserker will not be her servant anymore. That is the root of her uneasiness. She ran away from the castle not in fear of her own defeat, but in fear of losing her servant. The Black Giant carries her as they make their way through the forest. The uneasiness does not go away, but assails her with increased weight. She cannot get away. The girl vaguely understands she cannot get away from this uneasiness and fear. The black giant stops. Oh, Zoken is here. In front of them is a withered Magus. Next to him is Assassin wearing a white skull mask. Mato Zoken. She figures out right away he is the Magus of Makiri that she was informed of when she left her home country. Mato Zoken. The girl jumps to the ground and confronts the old man. There is no fear in her eyes. The enemy before her is not the terrifying one she sensed. <laughs> the girl coldly glares at him as he laughs. The Holy Grail does not choose, just like the old man says. Masters are chosen by the Holy Grail, servants are given form of the Holy Grail's power, and they stay in this world with the help of the Masters. The rules are intentionally distorted and spread around. The girl knows the purpose of the Holy Grail war is actually the other way around. The Holy Grail is merely something to be filled. Masters are not chosen, but prepared as part of the ritual. And servants are merely tools used to open the gate. <laughs> あなたこそモーネに毒されているんじゃないの造形器に Her voice is cold. The old man accepts her scorn with a laugh. いやいや、心配には及ばん。マキリの衰退もここまでよ。ことは成りつつあってな。予定では次の儀式で行うはずじゃったが、今回は駒に恵まれての、わしの悲願は、あと一手で叶おうとしておる。そう。なら勝手に
主に似て臆病なサーバントねそんなに死ぬのが怖いなら戦わなければいいのにあなたといい造犬といいそんなに自分の命が大事 There's no reply. Assassin does not speak, but his master laughs in his place. Ah, daiji da to. Waga nozomi a furo fushi. Kuyasu no nozomi mo eigo ni kizamareru jishin no nade na. Wale ra wa onaji mokuteki no tame, kou shite maishin shite oru toyu wake da. Shouki na no anata, seihai ni kakeru nozomi ga furo fushi desu te. Hatred shows in the girl's eyes. His grin widens still further. It's as if he were waiting for that scornful reaction. Tozenja,身を人の体は100年の時間に耐えられないそれを超えようというのだから代償は必要だわそれに耐えられないなら消えればいい苦しいのなら死ねば楽になるんじゃなくて<笑> The old body trembles The mega shakes as if racked by coughing and <笑><笑>やはりそうきたかインツベルン貴様らとて千年続けて同じ思想よ。所詮人形、やはり人間には近づけなんだ。<笑> He laughs from the bottom of his heart. なんですって。たわけめ。よく聞くがよい、冬の娘よ。人の身において、死に勝る無念などない。虫どもの苗床ことなるこの痛みなど、物がしに比べれば、かほどのものでもないわ。事故の存続こそが苦しみから逃れる唯一の真理。死ねば楽になるなどと、それこそ生きていない証ではないか。だからこそ、お主は人形に過ぎぬのだ。その急増の体では、あと一年と持つまい。短命に定められた作り物に人間の欲望は理解できぬということだ。He's acting like she's interesting. He's talking about her like she's a robot or something or artificial. It's like your hurriedly constructed body should not last for another year. A short lived artificial product. What is he saying about her? Am I dumb? Eh, he can't do it. I'm not a human being. I'm not a human being. Be wild if it turns out that she wasn't fully human. エゴを不滅の器が欲しいそのためにそのためにセイハイを手に入れようというの死が恐ろしいからセイハイを求めるの死が恐ろしくない人間がいるのかねよいかいかな真理いかな境地にたどり着こうと無駄なこと事故の消
その願望はこの森だけでは飽き足らず世界中の金を殺すことになろうその行いによって他人が滅びようと知ったことではない当然であろうもとより人間とはそのようにしてここまで広がり育ち増え肥満しきったうぞうむぞうそこにもはや連鎖すべき法則など成り立たぬいずれ破綻するのであればわし一人が足並みを崩したところで誰にも異論は挟ませぬわ The old man speaks happily after looking at him in surprise. アキレタはそこまで見失ってしまったのアキリ The girl speaks in a voice not her own 何思い出しなさい私たちの悲願奇跡に至ろうとする絶望は私たちは何のために人の身であることにこだわり人の身であるままに人あらざる地点に到達しようとしていたのか yeah, she doesn't sound like her, does she? His laugh stops. The old m a k e squints as if peering into the distant sky. What? What is this? Justice's mimicry? Huh? Or mimicry? He distorts his face in hatred and glares at the white girl. I am so confused right now. アインツベルの聖杯このマキリ造券がもらい受ける The old man's shadow creeps across the ground With that, the pressure on the girl increases The black giant enters battle without waiting for the girl's order The girl's voice does not reach him The black giant, accompanied by a whirlwind, mows down the pressing shadow, but. What? This is where we're gonna find out what the heck is going on. Sounds of wind. The wind running through the forest and shaking the trees is something I have heard before. The tremors are growing more intense. We're closing in on the source. It's probably on the other side of that next thicket. The battle to decide the strongest is raging just behind those dense trees. My feet stop. A second before I burst into the open, I skid to a halt and hide myself. Basaka. Tosaka also hides behind a tree and stares at the disastrous scene in the clearing. The place is literally a battlefield. There are three servants fighting. Oh. One is the black giant, Berserker. Another is the white skull masked killer, Assassin. And the last one, the last one. What? Ah, what the fuck? What? Saber? Oh, that's right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I remember at the very, very. Oh, wow. How did I forget about that? At the very beginning of this, when they had kind of like the opening、uh, seat. What is it? What would you call it? Like an opening cutscene or what? As, as, you know, the thing where it's got the music playing, it's got the flashes of all the characters. There was Saber dressed in black. So I guess, like, Assassin, he's like brought her back from the dead and now she's like a puppet. What the fuck? Because he did that with Caster, right? In, in a sense? So that's his power, I guess, is being like what everyone that he kills, he can bring back and use them. Tosaka's voice is shaking. I can't really hear her. Even though she's right next to me, her whisper doesn't register for some reason. The third servant. I'm seeing the one clad in black armor for the first time. I thought I was going to be freaking Gilgamesh. I'm like, who, which other servant is there that I'm not thinking about? Other, Ryder. I guess Ryder would have been another one. But. I was like, there's no way that Saber is gone for realsies. We still have so much of the, of, the sh of the story left. She reminds me of someone I know really well. The Black Giant howls. An attack powerful enough to destroy a mountain swings through empty space, smashing down to the ground. Even the flying rubble does not cause her to falter. 
The source of the raging wind must be that black swordsman, and the black figure makes her way through Berserker's sword and the flying claws and attacks at his defenseless body. She looks badass, though. The anguish is the giant's. His body of steel can nullify almost any attack, but the black swordsman cuts it like nothing. The sword stains the giant's side black, just like darkness consuming light. And then there's the black shadow still lurking around, right? Ilya sounds like she's crying. Mato Zokin laughs. The two masters, Ilya and Zokin, confront each other while their servants stand in front of them as shields. In front of Zokin is Assassin, who must have been defeated by Berserker. In front of Ilya is Berserker, his entire body covered in black. So I guess Assassin's down, but maybe Zokin now has Saber as his new servant. The ground beneath his feet is turned into a black pond. It is not soil, but a bottomless swamp sealing his movements. Not only that, but black veins are coming out of the swamp, restraining the limbs, the giant slips. Oh shit, and then if he gets Berserker, it's all over. He just keeps, he just keeps taking people's servants. Ah, there it is. I know what that is. That has to be the Black Shadow. But for an instant... It looks like something I know. I'm so confused, though. I thought that the Black Shadow thing, Zoken was afraid of that thing. I thought that, like, it was a complete separate entity. Uh, I'm so confused right now. The deafening crash shocks me back to reality. The situation is hopeless. Berserker is strong. Even though the shadow has nearly engulfed him, he still stands against the swordsman. But yeah, the black shadow did engulf Saber as well. I, yeah, I don't know. But he's at his limit. The black swordsman charges and slashes at Berserker. Even if they are equally strong, Berserker's movement is further restricted with each passing second. Then, the balance will only tip further towards the swordsman the longer they fight. Mm. Okay, I guess he's not dead yet. His figure grows hazy. He vanishes from the forest, leaving Assassin behind. His presence, along with his figure, fades away. Okay, so it seems like maybe they're not working together. It's like he sensed that this black shadow thing is coming to consume, and it happened to catch Berserker, I guess maybe because he's the stronger enemy and, tra and trapped him, but it seems like they're also using the black shadow to their benefit. Zokin has disappeared. The only ones remaining are Assassin and Berserker, and the Black Swordsman raising her sword. <laughs> Ilya murmurs in a motionless voice. What did he make of that? The giant advances with a roar. His advance is like a storm. Berserker charges, kicking away the black shadow that has swallowed him up to his knees. It's an impossible action. The mud below him isn't the only thing binding him, as the black shadow is coiled all around his body. Okay, so there's, yeah, there's the mud, and then there's the shadow. He cannot move forward. Berserker cannot even take a step forward with his body bound by the black shadow. For that reason, he tore his body apart. He grabbed his chest and tore off the black shadow with a sound. He tore off his flesh along with the shadow, going deep enough to expose his bones. Ooh, damn! The giant bursts into motion. With the force of a whirlwind behind it, the next swing will surely destroy the Black Swordsman. It will be his last attack. He has ripped off his body, or sorry, he's ripped his body apart and is executing this attack on the verge of his death. There's no way his attack isn't fatal. And in response, the Swordsman meets it with her strong attack. Oh, is she gonna use Excalibur? <laughs> Yeah, 
Ilya starts to run. She dashes frantically to Berserker, as if she doesn't see the shadow expanding at his feet. Yeah. I can't do anything, even if I go out now. I have no hope of winning against either the shadow or the swordsman. But still, but still, I have to stop Ilya. Yeah. I jump out from behind the tree. I grab Ilya from behind as she runs toward Berserker. The mad warrior's roar, the strong wind, and an explosion that even takes away my vision. They all flow into my numb ears at once. I hold Ilya in my arms as the wind knocks me to the ground. White light fills my vision and I can't even manage to stand up. No, standing up never crosses my mind. My body feels hot. Something deep within me resonates with the attack. I don't understand why, but this heat is in resonance with the noble phantasm. I guess because he's still connected with Saber? My breathing has been deadened, just like my vision. I can't do anything right now. My body will not function as a human being as long as that sword is engraved in my eyes. I'm entranced. My heart is taken away by something I only saw for an instant. That thing is an illusion far superior to the numerous other noble phantasms. There are many that are crafted more splendidly and with better skill, but the beauty of that noble phantasm is not its appearance. To describe the sword as beautiful would only dirty it. The sword is not beautiful, but sacred. People's conception, legends weaved only out of hope. It is not a myth, nor is it inhuman work. It is a crystal trained by heart alone, and that is why that sword will reign as the strongest fantasy. My vision returns. The sky is lit with dark red light, and is dark like night. A light that split the forest must have been darkness itself. The fire is burning silently, but the air is still cold. Is it something that freezes oxygen instead of burning it? The darkly lit forest lowers its temperature. A swordsman is standing with a black fire in the background. With Ilya still in my arms, I glare at the pointed sword. I don't feel any hostility from the swordsman. I fear my death and at the same time grit my teeth in vexation. It's different. She's a different person. It's not just her hostility. She's. I don't feel any of the nobility I previously felt from her. Her helm breaks. It must have been Berserker's last attack. Her face is revealed, and although she's completely different, she's still the same. See. There's no reply. The now golden eyes do not reveal anything, but plainly look down at us. Zero. Ilya's voice is trembling. A sword is pointed at her, and Berserker is sinking into the shadow behind Saber. The defeat of her servant and her impending death. Any young girl would tremble in this situation. Saber. I shake off any unnecessary emotions. I hug Ilya harder and put strength into my free right arm. Now is not the time to be spaced out. I'm going to save Ilya. I'm going to save Ilya and return to my home, so I can't just cower and wait for my death. Saber swings her sword. She tries to slash at me as I stand up, and at that instant parries three arrows shot from her side. Ata. I get to my feet, still holding Ilya in one arm. The swords clash. Archer shot at Saber and attacked her without pause. <laughs> but it doesn't do much. Even with his godlike speed, Saber easily repels his twin blades. <clears throat> Archer is acting strangely. Looking, I see the black shadow is entangling around his feet. <laughs> The cool voice is definitely Saber's. She easily smashes the black shadow and... <laughs> sends Archer flying into the forest behind him. She's struck with enough force to throw him back in spite of his defense of the shadow holding his feet. And once again, Saber confronts us silently. Her eyes. They tell me she is resolved to kill me if I do not hand Ilya over. 
Ilya lets go of my arm. It seems she wants me to hand her over, and the last switch is tripped inside my head. Is he hoping he can get through like, hey, you remember me, right? I push Ilya behind me and grip the wooden sword with both hands. You gotta admit his tenacity, though, that he thinks he can even hold her off for a little bit. But of course it's true, he probably can somehow. I hold it at the ready right in front of me. I'll drive all my power into magical energy as soon as Saber charges at me. That's all I can do now. I have nothing to say to her. Well, maybe Ryder will come and help us as well. That way it'll be at least... <laughs> I don't want to say a fair fight, but at least help us out a little bit. I can't apologize, nor can I tell her to come back. I can't say something like that when she hasn't said anything herself. Saber's in front of me as an enemy. Then the only way to answer her is to fight with all my might. This feels like this is what would have happened if Caster had been successful in uh, converting her to her side. I take aim. I won't even try to take her life at the cost of my own. Saber taught me that such tactics are useless. An attack with the premise of your death is only effective against an opponent as strong as you. Against Saber, I can't hope for something as good as a mutual kill. Therefore, I'm only aiming at one spot. Her helmet shattered, so the head must be damaged somewhat. That's where I'm going to strike with all my might. I'll defeat my enemy and live on. Unless I get that clear image in my head, I won't even be a match against Saber. She's coming. Dodge it, dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. I don't care if I look miserable. I don't care if I have to crawl on the ground. Unless I dodge this attack, I can never protect Ilya. I'm dead. I've fought Saber before, so I know this will be fatal. The lightning fast attack comes from the upper left. Slicing through my neck will be as easy as mowing rice. But my head is still attached. Saber's sword stopped just shy of my throat. No way, she gonna be like, I know you. What happened? She silently sheaths her sword and jumps away. Could that be her reason? The black pond expands on the ground. The shadow is about to crawl out of there. There's just so much going on right now. I'm sure of it. That is the thing I saw at the park the other night. An unknown thing that's just like a cluster of curse. Okay, so she's working with a shadow. Or assassin. Sabra walks over to the black mud and she sinks into the mud just like Berserker did. Okay, so she's... Okay. <laughs> I watch her until she completely disappears. I don't care why she's still in this world or why she's my enemy now. Once again, no, now that Berserker's in that black mud, does that mean that he's also going to become like Saber? Now that we're enemies, all we can do is fight. That's the nature of this war. But still, I think for a second that she wouldn't have been stained black like that if I'd been stronger. Emiaku. Tosaka's voice brings me back to myself. In front of me are the approaching black shadow and assassin whose white mask is distorted with a smile. I take Ilya's hand and start running. <laughs> Ilya takes one sad glance at the mud that swallowed Berserker and keeps back her tears as she starts running. Okay, so status screen updated. I guess it's probably going to be with... Uh, ba 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 With Saber? Saber. Lawful evil. Okay. Her riding skills are lost. Nullifies all magic that requires less than three verses. It is difficult to hurt her, even using great magic or ritual magic. Because she has a dark alignment, her magic resistance has decreased. Okay, I wish I could remember what she looks like, or what her, like, abilities were before. Because it says that some abilities have been lost, but I'm sure she makes up for it in other ways. The ability to always feel the best course for oneself during combat, because she continuously su is suppressing her rage, her instincts have become more blunt. Alright, magical energy burst. An enormous amount of magical energy always covers Black Saber's body like a dense fog. With her black armor and her trail of mana, her defense has increased considerably. Charisma. Talent to command and lead a great army increases the ability of one's allies in a battle between armies. Her leadership is increased, but the morale of her soldiers have decreased dramatically. 
black. Okay, so we have a new, uh, I guess she doesn't have, um, okay, so still Excalibur. Black Sword of Ultimate Light. Since Excalibur is an amplifier that transforms the magical energy of its possessor, the light of the Holy Sword of Black Saber has turned black. As the ladies of the lake Vivian and Morgana exi uh, coexist, this Holy Sword seems to have attributes of both good and evil. Okay, so I, I haven't even checked this. Oh my gosh, I'm so behind on this stuff. Okay, uh, Assassin, Heartbeat of Delusion, the Arm of Curses. This is the Arm of the Evil Spirit, Shaitan. And it has the power to curse people to death. Using a cluster of ether, it can, uh, creates a dual existence from uh, Tay. Is that supposed to be the <laughs> reflected figure of the target in a mirror that influences the real target? By killing the fake that affects. Oh, they're saying it twice. Tay real. It curses the target to death without putting a finger on the target. An assassination technique that ignores any strong physical defenses and destroys the heart. No matter how strong. Oh my gosh. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be strong. A couple of uh, spelling errors there. How strong the target's armor, it is meaningless against the heartbeat of delusion. To resist the heartbeat of delusion, rather than relying on CON, endurance, it's essential to have enough MGI, magical energy, to prevent him creating the dual existence. I should probably check these and see if I've got, you know, if there's anything I've missed here. So these things we already knew from the previous. Fortunately, we didn't get to see Berserker for very long, did we, in this one? We went through the forest. In front of me is Tosaka leading the way. Behind us is Assassin pursuing us through the trees. She must be worried about us. Even though she could have escaped by now, she slows down and turns to look at us. I know that the enemy is right behind us, but I can't shake him off. Servant Assassin is after us. There is no way I can shake him off when I have Ilya with. <laughs> I hear an ominous voice right by my ear. When I look to my side, I see a white death's head smiling as he licks the dagger. The masked figure is knocked away. While running beside me, Assassin was thrown off guard by a kick to the side. <laughs> Archer does not slacken his pace as he talks. Archer is looking at Assassin and something else that's coming from behind him. It's after us. That shadow is coming after us while staining the ground black. Archer. Archer slows down a bit and goes behind us. At that instant, right before he leaves, he gives Ilya a look heavy with regret. I go through the forest with the sound of clashing swords at my back. As Assassin follows, he's obstructed by Archer's efforts. <clears throat> Unable to sustain the offensive, Assassin is once again forced to retreat. Their attacks are matched. Even the daggers thrown at me are shot down, and it's obvious Assassin is not in control of the fight. But it's not because Assassin is weak. <laughs> Archer repels the multitude of daggers. His vigor is incomparable to before. The scales of victory are tipping towards Archer. I don't know why, but he's as strong as a fierce god right now. Whenever they say that, like, it's tipping in someone's favor, it makes me think that they're just gonna just completely get destroyed soon enough. <sighs> With even his strongest attack repelled, Assassin raises his voice as he retreats. In response, <laughs> Archer must consider it his chance of victory as he charges. He cuts the white skull with one blow. A black cloak scatters in all directions. Assassin retreats clutching at his broken mask. It's not a retreat to regroup, but a retreat to save his life. The black servant runs away from Archer and disappears into the trees. Hey, we still got the shadow chasing us. 
It's like a cocky. Whenever it's like this, like, oh, I think we're safe. I'm like, no, no, probably not. <laughs> Tosaka looks relieved. Me. Yeah, I figured it wasn't over. Behind her. Yeah, right. We still got that thing to worry about. It appears as if born from the tree's shadows. What? She looks behind her. At the same time, the black shadow extends its, its tentacle and... Tosaka... I won't make it even if I run. I'll witness Tosaka getting pierced by that black tentacle. <laughs> oh, but the one I actually see get impaled is Archer, who pushes her aside. I knew it. I knew when he was like, they said that it was working on Archer's favor, he was going to get hurt or maybe even killed. Hopefully he's not dead yet. <laughs> or that they have another one and now it's just basically we have to fight an army of previous servants. As it's dwindling on our side, Tosaka looks up at Archer without comprehension. It's the end for Archer. Oh god, he's still breathing, and he's not bleeding much. It should be possible for him to heal himself, even if he's pierced, as long as it's not fatal. But somehow, I understand Archer cannot fight anymore. That thing kills servants. No matter how strong a heroic spirit one is, one cannot beat that black shadow as long as one is summoned as a servant. I vaguely comprehend that fact for some reason. <laughs> So literally, who do we have if Archer's dead? Or at least, so we've got Ryder, basically. Ryder and, I guess, Gilgamesh? I think that's it. Tosaka must have felt the same thing. She calls to Archer with a trembling voice, stands up unsteadily, and of course, um, uh, Assassin as well. So it might literally just be up to Ryder to be the last one standing if she can beat Zoken and Assassin. Oh, I want to see that so bad. I want to see her beat down her abusive grandpa. Archer's shout stops her cold. The black shadow throbs. The forest is dying. All the magical energy here is being sucked in by that shadow. For some stupid reason, it reminds me of a water balloon. It's like putting more water into an already full balloon. It's expanding beyond capacity, and I get the bad image of it explode. We'll get sucked up. If we stay here, we'll be engulfed for sure. Archer pulls out the tentacle that pierced him and starts to run to Tosaka. Then I... Oh, all right. Okay, so the bad choice here is to bring back Tosaka. Tosaka's closer to the shadow than us. Archer's dying, and Tosaka, still in shock after his injury, cannot move. And I'm the only one who can bring her back. Tosaka! I let go of Ilya and run towards Tosaka. I'll still make it. There are five meters to her and ten, me uh, ten more to the shadow. If I run full speed and pull her to the side, I'm sure I can manage something. Am I going to get sucked in again? And that thought proves to be a mistake. The expanded shadow explodes in an instant. I don't even have time to take her hand. The shadow tramples over the forest under one breath. Die. And it mercilessly swallows the prey in its spider's web. My temperature rises. A fatal fever from the tropics destroys my human body. Die, die, die. There's no vaccine for it. Die, 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 die. But my body struggles to get away from the heat. And my mind abandons my body and dies first. Without its soul, the flesh is easily swallowed, as I melt into the black shadow. I think I hear the cry of an infant's birth. Oh. Well, that was quick and to the point. It feels like the dead ends are getting more, uh, with the exception of a few, like, they are very concise. Uh, I feel like the first couple, like, they really dragged on. Okay. Are we going to have a less depressing Tiger Dojo than the last time? よし。戦略的撤退を余儀なくされながら結局逃げ切れなかったデッドマンを助けるタイガー道場。始まるよ。はいはい、始まるよ。ああ、誰ぶったるんだれ。何をいじけておる弟子1号。本編の感情を道場に持ち込むのは5ハットだと申したであろう。はい、オッケーと。今回はちょっとフォローできないかなって。うん、お、シペスカス。なるほどの。I didn't protect her. 
私はただアーチャーが報われないって思っただけよむむ私ではわからない複雑な裏事情けどまあいいじゃない遠坂さんもアーチャーさんもシローもイリアちゃんもみんな仲良く死んじゃったんだからって笑い事かバカトラがーはあもう今日はここまでシローはすぐに選択肢に戻ってちゃんとアーチャーの言葉を守ること今日は森から出るまで電源切っちゃダメだからね What if I'm just like, no, I'm done actually. We're gonna wrap up the episode here. Don't worry, that's not the case. I'll protect Ilya. I can't try to save two people. Tosaka has Archer, but Ilya has no one. Then, I have to take Berserker's place. Ilya, I tackle Ilya, forcing her to the ground. And the instant I cover her body with my own, My vision and perception is filled with black. See, if I didn't know any better, I would assume that this was the wrong choice. It's hot. My body is almost blown away. The condensed and released wave of magical energy rages through the forest as a storm. It's not there. My vision is painted black. If it's this dark, even though I can clearly see, a black sun must have come falling down. My body is not there. It probably melted from the heat. My body is not there. The loss of my sense of touch is more disgusting than the pain. But that's a problem. I can't protect Ilya unless I have a body. The Black Shadow tries to take Ilya. I flail my right arm to drive it off, embracing her with that same arm I press her to the ground. And I finally realize my body is there. My body must be there, or else I couldn't have protected Ilya. Man, I panicked too much. All I lost was my left arm. That's the only part of me that vanished without a trace. The rest of my body is still there. Very optimistic, I'm like, I just lost my left arm, no biggie. But I still have the sense of loss. I only lost one of the two, but it feels like I lost my whole body. Damn, is he? did he actually lose his arm or does he just think he did? That'll be wild if he actually did. It's disappearing. The shadow fades away without trace, its energy spent. Ilya is safe. My ears must be numb as I can't hear what she's saying. What happened to Tosaka? Archer is there. His red cloak is painted a deeper red, and he's so weakened that he might disappear the next second. Ryder, there she is. How strange. Why is she here? Oh, so he's gonna, he's gonna give up his arm for me, so I guess I did lose an arm. Archer and Ryder are talking. What the hell is going on? I mean, basically, like, giving me my own arm, because Archer is basically Shiro. And in the end... Okay. He tenderly runs his fingers through Tosaka's hair. My vision fades to black. The dark sun no longer shines on the forest. Then, the darkness must be falling on my consciousness. Aww. Nice to see him actually be tender with her. So, ah, oh, that sucks. So he's gonna basically give up his life for me, even though, like, he hates me. <laughs> Archer bids farewell in a voice that sounds just like mine. The shadow wavers. The red knight is covered in blood, and Tosaka Rin is sitting on the ground, dumbfounded. About five meters away from them stands the silver-haired girl and Emiya Shiro hand in hand. The shadow wavers. After shrinking like a dead tree, the shadow expands like a blowfish. No, its poisonous nature is like an uglier deep-sea fish. The expansion continues without limit, swelling outward and dyeing the forest black. 
At that instant, the Red Knight dies protecting Tosaka Rin, and Emiyashiro survives by pure luck. That's... My goodness, if he, you got all the stats for, like, the servants, that would be... Shiro has the A++, S++ rank and pure luck, the amount of times he should have died. It's fortunate the ground is uneven. The expanding shadow passes over Emiyashiro, who is in a hollow pit, but his left arm is above its rim, unable to share in that fortune. <laughs> she wakes up. It's been half a day since she sent Ryder to guard Shiro. Mato Sakura, who shared a vision with her servant to follow the situation without ever leaving the house, is brought back to reality with that scene. <laughs> she feels like vomiting. Her vision is blurred as if she has lost it because she cut the shared vision off by force. Her body is sweating, and as soon as she breathes... <laughs> what's in her stomach rises up to her throat. She runs into the dressing room. She's covering her mouth with her hands, and as soon as she gets to the sink... <laughs> she vomits out everything in her stomach. She stands there with her head down, shoulders heaving. Her long hair flutters like a curtain, hiding her face from the mirror. She recalls the nightmare. There is no mistake about the vision. Emiyashiro's left arm was swallowed by the shadow while protecting the silver-haired girl. It melted away without trace from the shoulder down. Sakura masochistically yells at herself for considering such a thing. She feels a chill and a strange uplift, not able to think about what happened and what she should do. All she knows is she hates herself. She previously got the idea that if Emiyashiro were injured to a point where he wouldn't be able to go outside, he would not be in danger anymore. Oh, is it like a be careful what you wish for? As, and also, even if he lost his arm, as if he would let that stop him from doing anything. Yes, she was wrong. It will not solve anything. Was it simply carelessness that made her wish for him to be hurt? Now he's been wounded regardless of her wishes. Not a wound that will keep him indoors, but one that threatens his very life. There's no difference between the two. That's what it means to be injured. It's like a monkey's paw situation. Why did she think a misfortune to lose a part of one's body was a good thing? <laughs> and nausea does not go away. She does not stop vomiting even after throwing up everything. Gastric juice and blood. She thinks the sharp pain in her stomach and the scratch on her throat is like a punishment to condemn her. And after a while, her nausea finally goes away when the gastric juice runs out, and she regains her composure. She breathes heavily. Her shoulders are moving up and down painfully. She puts her hand on the sink and tries to calm down, as if she's just finished running a marathon. Oh, creepy. Oh, she's gonna be pissed when she learns... Well, pissed, but also probably relieved, but also upset when she learns that uh, Archer's gonna give up his arm, and he can still fight. In a trance, she speaks her true feelings. A short murmur. Still breathing heavily, she raises her head. The figure in the mirror is crushed by a feeling of guilt. The apologetic expression is caused by her worry for Emiyashiro's well-being. Uh, well she truly wishes for his safety. The mirror reflects a face with a crooked smile. Come on, let me see that face. Let me see it. Ah, oh, come on. That would have been so cool. All right, guys. Okay, so um, it was a short episode, but uh, quite big revelations happening. Uh, the servants are just dropping like flies. We lost Berserker, and it seems like Archer's pretty much dead. Uh, but, of course, the big thing is we have Dark Saber, uh, which is wild. Like, I kept saying, like, there's no way Saber's actually gone, especially so early on in the game. And in a way, she is back, but she is not on our side anymore. I don't know if she's able to, like, if it's going to be a situation, like, with Caster, where she can be brought back to our side and working with us again. It's a situation where it seems like we might have to defeat Saber, and we are at a big disadvantage. Ilya's lost Berserker, um, Tosaka may have lost Archer, 
Uh, I've lost an arm, it seems like, and then they were saying stuff at the end and made it seem like we were gonna, like, get Archer's arm, basically. Um, so that's bad, and then that thing at the end with Sakura, where she was just like, oh, I'm so upset that Shira was hurt, but at the same time, I'm not, because then he won't fight anymore, or something like that, like, just like, whoa, it just, it's cool to see that dark side of Sakura popping up from time to time. So we're we're in a bad spot. It seems like the only person we have on our side now, like who has a servant, is Sakura and Ryder. And who knows if Sakura is going to be able to keep a hold of herself. She's a ticking time bomb, you know. She she could pass at any moment, or Zoken could kill her. Especially now that he's got multiple servants. Um, so it's just bad news all around. It feels very hopeless, but we can come back from this. I don't know how, but we can. So. I can't wait to see what happens next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned next week for part 14. Until then, bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons. Salieri, Revealing Storm, Chris Wagstaff, Linz VA, Kenju Storm, and iCognito.